Hello ladies and gents. We're going to have a look at today one of the, the underused features of Excel, certainly within education, which is the pivot table. So we're going to start off with a standard mark book. We have children ordered by surname and first name, by what form they're in, by what set they're in for science, by the sex, and by some assessment data, autumn, spring, and at the end of the year, and then some ATs and the overall teacher assessment. Now if you're at the end of the year and you're analyzing the data for your cohort or your class, what you'd probably do at this point is want to be able to to group the classes together so that maybe you can work out some averages. There is though, built into Excel, a significantly easier and more powerful way of doing that. And that's what's called a pivot table. And we're going to start off the same way by highlighting all of the data and we're going to go in Excel 2007, Office 2007 and 2010, we're going to go to Insert Pivot Table. In previous versions of Excel it's under the Data menu, but we're going to go Insert Pivot Table. And by default it picks up the data range we've just highlighted and we're going to put the pivot table into a new worksheet. We're going to click on OK and it'll produce a blank table possibly quite a frightening looking table, it's blank, nothing in there, just some data holders. And to the right hand side, here's, here's the field list. And now we're going to click into the information that we want to include in the table. So we don't care about the kids' names, but maybe the form is going to be interesting. So we're going to click in it. And Excel has pulled through from my data the forms that the sh children are in, and it's put it into one of the columns maybe set for science is interesting. If I click on sex, now it's broken each form by each set and then each set by sex. Now we need to put some data into the table itself and what we're going to focus on is the teacher assessment. So instead of clicking on the teacher assessment I'm going to click and hold the left mouse button and I'm going to drag the teacher assess data across into the data items. So if I take my mouse button off there, I've now got form by set by sex and something that says it's the totals. But at this point we need to be clear what that is because by default Excel sums things up. So if I actually click in the data itself, not on the heading but in the data, at the top of the screen it says active field sum of teacher assessment. Now that doesn't make sense because what it's adding up is it's adding up the level threes and fours and fives so it's adding up three and four and five and whatever levels these students have got. So I'm going to change that in field settings to count. Okay. Now at this case it's counting the number of students and we want to break that down into a count of each individual level. So I'm going to go back to my field list and I'm going to drag the teacher assessment again back to the heading of the first column. And there we go. We've now broken the data down by form, set and sex and teacher assessments at level 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 and a count of how many students have achieved those levels. So let me just tidy up here a bit. I'm going to turn off the field list and maybe I'm going to try and simplify the table so it makes a bit more sense. Form. Well at this point the form isn't totally relevant so I'm going to click and hold on form and I'm going to drag it up until I get a blue horizontal bar right at the top of the screen. I'm going to do the same thing for sex. I'm going to click in the sex field and I'm going to drag it up to the top till it becomes a horizontal bar. Take my finger off the mouse button. I've summarized the data by set D1, D2, D3, M1, 2, 3 and 4 and by what level the students got in each set. Level 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And you can see that maybe instantly the M1 has got a higher proportion of level 6s and 7s. In fact no one in M1 got lower than level 6 and they were the only level 7s that were seen in this group. At the bottom you can see the sum of each level. 22 people got a level 3, 78 students got a level 5. The pivot table is like a layer of analysis on top 
of the sheet you started with. At this point, what we probably want to do is to insert a chart. So click within the chart, and then within the Options menu, I'm going to choose Pivot Chart. And I'm going to select a standard bar graph representation. And this time we've got the data that's displayed in the table as a chart. So we've got D1, D2, D3, M1, 2, 3 and 4 by each level. So the bars, different colours representing each level. And that chart is live from what's in the table. So maybe I just want to focus on, say, class D2. So if I go up to set within the table, click on the down arrow, and I can go down and I can disable select all, and I can just enable D2. Click on OK, and now the table is just showing me D2, and the chart reflects just class D2. OK, so now what I can do, maybe go back to my chart, and I can click on the sex field, right? the right-hand side of set, it will split set by sex. So if I do that now and take my finger off, you can see set D2 split by male and female. And that's what the graph represents. We've got set D2 split by females and males. I could, if I wanted to, maybe go back to my set and add in all the sets. Probably quite a complicated graph but it gives us the idea of male and female performance across all of the classes. Okay, And maybe I want to get rid of set altogether and just push it back up into the horizontal page field at the top. And now I've got a breakdown for the cohort of just the sex split between males and females for each individual level that took place. Now, pivot tables can be used to analyze the data as well, because we can, if you highlight data and you look at the bottom of the screen, by default, Excel will average, count, and sum that data. So here we go. We know that, I don't know, for all of the males, if we highlight all of the males going across, the average, 17.6, does that mean anything? No, it doesn't, because this is a count of what levels they got five data sets and the sum was 88. So in this case, the data doesn't mean anything. So we've got to be careful what's going on, remembering at all times that these fields are a count, a tally chart of who got what level. Okay. So one final thing that we can do with this tally, this pivot table that's of use is if I drag down, say, the form data now to a, hor a vertical column on the left-hand side, I've now got each form broken down by each sex. I'm going to push sex back away. So I've now got the data sliced by form, which might be useful in the pastoral context. But the final thing that we can do here with the pivot table is if I look at the chart, 9B, form 9B, has a really quite high percentage of students who are only achieving level 3. If I find 9B within my chart, and I double click on that, Excel will drill down, is the phrase, into that data and it's showing me 9B and the students who got a level 3. Now again it's important to realize that this isn't the live data, the chart is there. It's not the pivot table, the pivot table is there. It's another copy of the data that just shows me the students from 9B who got a level 3. Okay, so if I delete that sheet away, so we're back where we started, maybe I want to know from 9B, all of these seven students, sorry, in 9C, all of these seven students who got a level 6. Double click on the data, and it takes me straight to a group of students from a particular form with a particular level. And that ability to drill down into live data means that you don't have to print things out, you don't have to do things manually. And we can slice and dice the data to help us maybe inform record writing, report writing, setting, and such things. So there we go. I think one of the most useful and underrated features of Excel, certainly in education, is the use of pivot tables. Thank you.